feeling good. And trying to get warm when it's been cold out the last couple of days. Um, uh, as always, I start off my <coughs> with two, not just two, only two, uh, poems. Ode to my hero. With President's Day coming up this Monday, I submitted my tribute to the President born February 12th, 1809. Ode to my hero, dear A. And many things, A. Lincoln was the best. From boyhood to manhood, how he shone, for ordained to be ready to tread, A. was proud, was proud. A picture of him as a farm lad, poorly dressed, kind soul, and working so hard all alone. For ordained to be, dear A. was blessed, entertaining, Lincoln liked to just. Tall and strong was he when fully grown. For a day to be, dear A was blessed. Great intelligence and talent he possessed. Many things he learned all on his own. For a day to be, dear A was blessed. He led a nation facing great unrest. For slavery, dear A could not have been known. For a day to be, Dear A was blessed. February 15, 2020, for Sherry. This was put in by Sherry Krasonke, Harper's Magazine, Ode to a President or Leader. And my last and the final poem for today, I must read it and then you start listening to the first letter of every word. Greatness is a child of choice and chance. Even when one's character is right. One must fit the urgent circumstance. Recurring wrongs that one gets to require, greatness needs a time that calls for greatness. Embracing an entire generation when some great danger, failure, or injustice awaits a leader to unite the nation. So, might mantle fall on a soul, having just the qualities to be in plan and temper suited to the role, nor out one chose chose turn down its greatness waits upon one like a bird that knows well one humility and pride on which she played one by her side, nor after will one care how much she lies. And if you were listening, that that uh, spelled out four clauses. At this time, I'm opening the floor for any joys and concerns you have from the congregation. Tim, I just want to remind everybody about Super Bowl. Uh, even though the game is over, we're still celebrating Super Bowl till the end of the month. So next Sunday is the last Sunday to bring in items or make a donation. And just make sure you put on the envelope that it's for the food pantry for the Super Bowl. Thank you. Also, Terry reminded me, next weekend after our service, we're going to have a congressional meeting that will be after Sunday service.
Now go and live as Christ commands. Be merciful as God is merciful. Do not judge and you will not be judged. Do not condemn and you will not be condemned, but forgive and you will be forgiven. Give and it will be given to you. Amen.
in today's scripture, Jesus tells us to do something that is kind of hard. He says that we should love our enemies and pray for people who hurt us. That doesn't sound fun at all, does it? Have you ever tried to love someone who's been mean to you? No. No. Well, it's not an easy thing to do, is it? <laughs> when someone is mean to us, we want to get away from them, right? We don't want to be around them. We want to be kind to people who are nice to us, and that's very easy to do. And anyone can love someone who loves them back. But when we are able to be nice to people who aren't nice to us, well, that demonstrates the kind of love that God has for us. And when we show kindness to people who aren't so kind, and when we pray for others and offer a smile, it can have a remarkable impact. People won't expect you to be kind. But sometimes it can change the other person's attitude. Most of all, Jesus wants us to do the best we can at all times, right? Right. Whether they are kind to us or not, whether they are kind to us or not, help us to treat people. With care and prayer. With care and prayer. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for loving us. Even when we don't deserve it. Even when we don't deserve it. It's great to be back. You know, you, thank you for your patience with my uh, rescheduled surgery date and having to get some substitute preachers and everything, but hopefully everything worked out fine. So let me see what I have here. It's been so long since I've been up here, I don't know what I'm doing. All right, our scripture this morning is from Luke chapter 6, verses 27 to 38. But I say to you that, listen, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who abuse you. If anyone strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also. And from anyone who takes away your coat, do not withhold even your shirt. Give to everyone who begs from you, and if anyone takes away your goods, do, do not ask for them again. Do to others as you would have them do to you. If you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners love those who love them. If you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners do the same. If you lend to those from whom you hope to receive, what credit is that to you? Even sinner, sinners lend to sinners to receive as much again. But love your enemies, do good, and lend expecting nothing in return. Your reward will be great, and you will be children of the Most High, for he is kind to the ungrateful and the wicked. Be merciful, just as your Father is merciful. Do not judge, and you will not be judged. Do not condemn, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be put into your lap. For the measure you give will be the measure you give, get back. This is the word of the Lord. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, through your Holy Spirit, open our hearts and minds to your transforming word and scripture, that we may experience anew the height and depth and breadth of your love and be inspired to live as faithful disciples of Jesus Christ. She stood peeking out from behind the curtains as the jogger passed her house. He re as the jogger passed her house, he recalled the hurt she had inflicted upon his mother. At one time, she had been the matriarch of the congregation, 
His memories of her were not fond. He recalled her wicked tongue and the way she used to cut down others. He never forgot the day she used it, she used it against his mother, making her cry. That incident caused their family to leave the church where he had been baptized and confirmed. Here it was 15 years later, and now all he saw was a picture of someone desperately needing to be loved. Praying for the ability to forgive her, he stopped and went to the door. The curtain quickly closed as he rang her doorbell. Hesitantly, she cracked the door. Hello, Mrs. Sko. Do you remember me? I'm Marge's son. Her eyes widened in surprise as a note of recognition appeared. I live in Arizona now and I'm here on vacation. I saw you in the window and just wanted to stop and say hello. May I come in? She hesitated and then opened the door and asked him in. Forgive and you will be forgiven, Jesus tells us. There was silence when I asked the Monday night Bible study group what their initial thoughts on this passage were after we read it. And for good reason. Love your enemy? These days, really, Jesus? This is one of those scriptures that is incredibly difficult for us to deal with. In fact, we really would rather ignore it. But here it is. Love your enemies, Jesus instructed his followers. He was talking to a group of people who faced oppression and persecution from the Romans daily. To the Jews, the Romans were the enemy. The Jews weren't interested in loving those people. They wanted revenge. When someone wrongs us, forgiving them is the last thing on our minds. But that is what we are called to do. We must choose to forgive even if we feel wronged. We all fall short and need forgiveness. When we don't forgive, however, we are placing a wall between us and God. Forgiveness is the cornerstone in our relationship with God. Because God has forgiven our sins, we must now forgive those who have wronged us. In Bible study, we recalled some of the remarkable stories of those who have chosen to forgive those who have caused great harm. We remembered the story of the Pennsylvania Amish community where in 2006, a man opened fire in a school, shooting 10 girls and killing five of them before he committed suicide. On the day of the shooting, a grandfather of one of the murdered girls warned some young relatives not to hate the killer. He said, we must not think evil of this man. Another Amish father said he had a mother and a wife and a soul, and now he's standing before a just God. A member of the Brethren community near the Amish community explained, I don't think there's anybody here that wants to do anything but forgive and not only reach out to those who have suffered a loss in that way, but to reach out to the family of the man who committed these acts. And we remembered the shooting at a church in Charleston, South Carolina on June 17, 2015, where nine members of the church, including the pastor, were killed during a Bible study. The shooter, a white supremacist, targeted the church because of its history relating to civil rights and its importance within the African-American community. I Googled it, the story, and found this really fascinating. When news came out that the church members and their families had forgiven the shooter, there was much criticism by all kinds of people, including very famous people. However, a bright light came when on July 9th, 2015, after 13 hours of debate, the South Carolina Senate voted to remove the Confederate flag from display outside of the South Carolina State House. And on July 10th, it was taken down for, for the last time. It was after this shooting that began the movement to remove many of the Confederate statues in many cities. Being a Christian is all about relationship with family, friends, those we work with, those we worship with, and with God. The whole point of Jesus' death and resurrection was that sinners could come to know God and live with him forever. We can't earn our way to heaven, 
building a personal relationship with God is a priority for each of us. And we need to remember that we are Christians under construction. Every day we try to do the right thing. So when we fall down, we need to get up. Being a Christian means asking forgiveness and giving it. Therefore, we should make allowances for each other's faults, forgiving those who offend us. Forgive and you will be forgiven, Jesus says. So we are to forgive and love our enemies. Jesus makes it sound so easy, but it's not. It may be one of the most difficult things Jesus calls us to do. How are we to do this? Jesus gives, a, gives us a hint. Pray for them. In verse 28, he tells us, pray for those who abuse you. And that's not our natural inclination either. But you just cannot hate someone for whom you're praying. God's blessings are available to everyone, at least in this life, and there will come a, tie, a day of judgment, but that is not our worry. What Jesus is telling us is that as far as this world is concerned, our treatment of other people, even enemies, is to be based on seeking the highest and best for them, agape, love, just exactly the way God does. And Jesus makes another point here. If we do not act this way, what makes us any different from anyone else? If you only love the people who love you back, big deal. Jesus says that even the dregs of society are willing to respond with love for love. God's people need to be ready with more than that, even to the extent of responding with love for hate. If we can't manage that, we aren't any different from anyone else. Fred Rogers said it best, love isn't a state of perfect caring, it is an active noun like struggle. To love someone is to strive to accept that person exactly the way he or she is, right here and now. And Martin Luther King Jr. said, now there is a final reason I think that Jesus says love your enemies. It is this, that love has within it a redemptive power and there is a power there that eventually transforms individuals. Just keep being friendly to that person. Just keep loving them and they can't stand it too long. Oh, they react in many ways in the beginning. They react with guilt feelings and sometimes They'll hate you a little more at that transition period, but just keep loving them, he says. And by the power of your love, they will break down under the load. That's love, you see. It is redemptive. And this is why Jesus says love. There's something about love that builds up and is creative. There is something about hate that tears down and is destructive. So love your enemies. And at a different time, he said, forgiveness is not an occasional act. It is a constant attitude. There's a Spanish parable of a father and son who had a violent argument after which the son ran away. After a few months, the father set off to find him. He searched for more than a year and came up empty. Finally, in a desperate final effort to find him, the father put an ad in a big city newspaper. Dear Paco, meet me in front of this newspaper office at noon on Saturday. All is forgiven. I love you, your father. On Saturday, 800 Pacos showed up looking for forgiveness and love from their fathers. William Temple, Archbishop of Canterbury said, the only way a Christian has of getting rid of his enemies is to love them into being his friends. There are days when that might seem unrealistic, but you know, just might work. Amen. Let's see. Let's sing hymn number 838.
You may be seated. Let us go to God in a time of prayer. O Holy One, as you spoke your creative word in the beginning, as you spoke through prophets and teachers, as you spoke through evangelists and apostles, so you still speak to us today. You speak to us words of invitation to live into your abundant mercy. You speak to us inviting us to seek your thoughts and live your love. You speak to us inviting us to delight in your grace freely given to us and all creation. O word, O God, your word, O God, sings to us a melody of peace, a peace which passes all understanding. When our lives are filled with anxiety and worry, when our lives are filled with fear and uncertainty, when our lives lack direction or purpose or a sense of self-worth, sing to us once again of your life-giving love. Hold us in your loving arms and draw us deep into your very heart as it beats with the steady rhythm of your grace. Knowing that your love is sure, knowing your covenant is steadfast, knowing your peace, send us out as your church, O oh God, as we join you in your ongoing transformation of the world. Where drumbeats of war and violence rage, may we sound the harmonies of peace and hope, peace that is deep and true and just, peace that blends our voices into a mighty chorus of hope, hope that inspires and transforms even the most desperate of situations and circumstances. As your church sings with our very lives, O oh God, give us a deep sense of joy as we bear witness to the power of your transforming love in Jesus Christ. This day we pray for the church around the world, for those whose witness of faith comes with great risk, for those who need to know that they are not alone as they work tirelessly on our behalf as mission co-workers, for the church universal, be with our congregation, O oh God. Continue to blend our voices and weave our lives together in ways beautiful, faithful, profound, and holy. May all we say and do as disciples of Jesus Christ, who alone is the head of our church, be an offering of praise and thanksgiving for your steadfast love. And blend our voices now with the saints who have gone before us and with disciples throughout the world as we pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
Jesus calls us to live as his faithful disciples, to love our enemies, to do good, expecting nothing in return, offering mercy and forgiveness to others, just as God is merciful and forgives. Friends, live into our high calling in Jesus Christ and go with the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, our creator, redeemer, and sustainer. Amen. <laughs>